Okay, so we'll get started. My name is Bill Mason. I work for Red Hat. I'm responsible for partner strategy for virtualization and OpenStack. And I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Joseph George from Dell. And uh, we're gonna kind of tag team today's presentation about our joint offerings that we're putting together. Go ahead. So um, we've been working with Dell for almost 15 years, uh, collaborating, contributing to open source software. And um, I call it back to the future because uh, we're collaborating now and co-engineering a solution around OpenStack as well with Dell's storage and uh, networking and server hardware in Red Hat's OpenStack platform. Um, we're really pleased to be working with Dell. And I think one of the hallmarks of the joint engineering work we're doing together is that everything is in the open. Red Hat has a philosophy to put everything into open source. We're even open sourcing our cloud management platform. You might have heard Tim Yetten mention that earlier today. So um, we're lucky to be have, have a partner like Dell to work with uh, to put these solutions together. So um, Dell was the first in 1999 to pre-install Linux on servers and workstations and really kind of anticipated the trend of Linux. And they're one of the early uh, companies to join Rackspace and NASA in the OpenStack movement as well. So with Red Hat's strong capabilities around open source software and productizing them and making them enterprise ready and doing backports of features and providing a, an extended life cycle, combined with Dell's uh, uh, engineering excellence, we think we've got a really good, uh, really good solution for the market. And as I said, it's all, it's all open source software that everyone can use and contribute to. So uh, jo Joseph will be speaking in a minute about the, the Dell Red Hat cloud solutions that are powered by our Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. We call it Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform because it includes access to our enterprise Linux technology, as well as our enterprise virtualization, as well as our enterprise quality engineered OpenStack solution. And it's part of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux family. So it's just an extension of that um, successful product line. Um, and the solutions were made, announced commercially available at Red Hat Summit two weeks ago. And if there's any customers that are interested in talking with us about those solutions after we're done with today's presentation, we'll be happy to follow up with you. So I mentioned we focus on open, and we're really trying to, through the partnership and the collaboration, be a, a bi-directional two-way flow of information. OpenStack is relatively complex and sophisticated technology, and it's kind of hard for people that aren't familiar with it. And what Dell and Red Hat are working on together is to try and make it, uh, you know, I call it OpenStack for mere mortals, right? It's, it's making it easy enough for people to be able to deploy in your enterprise without having to have a significant uh, capability or domain expertise that maybe a, a limited set of people have today. Um, and then we want to feedback all the, all the, uh, all the uh, requirements and feedback that we get from enterprise customers, we want it to flow back into the open source community and flow back upstream so that everybody that works with OpenStack can benefit from that innovation as well. These are the areas where Dell and Red Hat are collaborating currently, uh, Cinder and Swift around OpenStack storage, Triple O for uh, OpenStack management and Foreman for deployment and provisioning. Um, both we call both under the cloud and over the cloud and installing the initial cloud capabilities and then allowing people that are using that cloud to also provision. Um, certainly collaborating around new uh, extensions to Neutron and the Open Daylight project where Red Hat is contributing. And then also Solometer for telemetry and monitoring and uh, heat for orchestration templates. Um, uh, you guys can read these and I'm sure the slides will be made available later. Where, where Red Hat and Dell have seen a, uh, a fair amount of adoption around OpenStack is in the financial services industry, where they want to see the same economies of scale and uh, commoditization benefits, frankly, that Linux brought to x86 servers. They want to see that in software-defined networking and software-defined storage. We're working with telecommunications companies who want to enjoy those same type of economies of scale that um, enterprises uh, see. We're working with retail customers that want to have an elastic and scalable e-commerce infrastructure like Amazon Web Services offers, but not have to make the same level of investment in personnel um, and uh, time that it took for AWS to, to bring its elastic, scalable capabilities together. We're seeing public sector companies who feel a, kind of a civic responsibility to use open and free software. And we're also working with uh, educational institutions that are interested in like, high-performance computing and um, doing big data research. As I mentioned, we want to kind of be a, a, a conduit, for lack of a better term, from the OpenStack community to enterprise customers and, and back, vice versa, too. We want, um, we want OpenStack to be used in a lot of places. We want people that are, uh, you know, uh, people saw a certain benefit to virtualization but didn't quite realize the, the level of resource utilization that they'd hoped with virtualization alone. And with OpenStack around compute storage and networking, 
Um, it's just not only is it more efficient use of your resources, but you get such greater utilization as well. And as, uh, as Red Hat and Dell jointly um, work with customers to capture their next generation requirements, we'll be driving those into subsequent OpenStack releases like the Juno release and, and beyond. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague Joseph and switch spots. Great, uh, thanks Bill. Sure. And how about I not stand in front of the projector? All right, very good. Uh, so good afternoon everybody, and it is, uh, boy this not standing in front of the projector thing's harder than it looks. Uh, it's good to see everybody here. Um, like uh, Bill said, uh, Dell's been a part of the OpenStack movement uh, since 2010, which is ironically when the uh, OpenStack movement began. So we've been there since day one. Um, I have the pleasure of actually having been at every, every summit so far, and, and it's uh, fantastic to see it grow as much as it has. Um, we'll spend some time today around what Dell and Red Hat are doing together in the OpenStack space. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, we're really excited about this is that Dell comes to this uh, space with a lot of history already. We have already, you know, we've enabled customers throughout uh, the last three years uh, on building reference architectures, getting, um, you know, getting your uh, OpenStack environments to work. There's a few, few of you in this room uh, that, that we've worked with personally to help uh, get those things stood up. And so with uh, the collaboration with Red Hat, we are, and Sam um, made sure to highlight this today at his keynote, we are trying to keep the open in OpenStack. And we, we really believe strongly that doing everything in the open source and driving it in, in, in community, which is a key tenet of how Red Hat does open source, is a key part of how we want to take OpenStack to the enterprise. Um, if you look at all the things that are happening in the, in the open source space, that really the mainstream markets already feel comfortable with. Android's a really good example of that. Linux operating systems are a really good example of that. At the last IDC uh, report, 28% of all servers that are sold today have Linux landing on them. So we've come a long way. People are comfortable with open source that is enterprise ready, that is ready to be consumed um, at that level. And that's why we think getting OpenStack to that place with Red Hat in collaboration with Dell is going to help us, uh, help us bring OpenStack to enterprise. We're all one community. We want to drive it that way. So let's talk about a few of the aspects that we're hoping that this solution is going to address. Um, so let's start at the, at the top left, the certified end-to-end -end solutions. Um, a lot of, I mentioned a few customers in this room that have actually used the pure open source bits in a lot of ways. Uh, if you have that level of sophistication, if you're able to get in the code, you're able to write Python, you're able to do the manipulation uh, at, the, at the CLI level, fantastic. The mission for us, the mission for Dell and Red Hat is to take all the goodness that the community has been developing and become, as Bill said, the emissary to the enterprise. At, along with participating in the community, the code contributions, um, you know, supporting the community in terms of events and, and meetups and things like that, driving um, knowledge and driving understanding of what's happening in these spaces. We know we've got to give these enterprises something that's a little bit more hardened, something that they can leverage, something where they can pick up a phone and they can ask their questions. They're never going to get to the, the scale or the sophistication level that a lot of the folks in this room have. And that's okay by us and okay by them. I've had actual customers that come to me and say, if we have OpEx, we're gonna spend that on people that are gonna help us drive the business forward. What we need are vendors like you to help make this a little simpler, make this a little bit easier, make it a little bit more consumable so I don't have to hire a staff of people to do it. We want to take and access the knowledge and the, and the expertise your developers have and the community developers have, but at the end of the day, we've got to make this solve a problem. And that's what really, with Red Hat and us certifying these solutions, we can go to these markets and say, here's how you build storage as a service using OpenStack, and a hardware reference architecture. Here's how you can build a test dev environment. Here's how you can build platform as a service. That's what the enterprise is looking for. And this partnership is helping build those certified end-to-end -end solutions. Um, and I kind of touched on this, addressing some of the gaps um, that, the, that the core enterprise need. The, they have problems that they're looking, open, that looking to OpenStack to solve. And that's what we're trying to position this with uh, as well. I touched on the enterprise use cases, platform as a service, storage as a service, test dev environments. Um, a content distribution is actually a, a big one that comes up at OpenStack a lot. And it's, the, it's usually a point where customers have an opportunity to say, new applications are now beginning to emerge. Rather than having the conversation that says, I have an existing application that runs in the traditional IT environment, how do I port that over to a new distributed cloud environment? What's really happening is customers saying, I have new use cases that are popping up. 
that need new workloads and new applications, let's look at OpenStack to actually stand that up. And that's where these new use cases come out. And like I said, content distribution is a big one where that comes up quite a bit. Um, then when we talk about the innovation, a lot of our customers want to take advantage of the open source innovation that's happening. There's a great uh, Black Duck software survey that comes out every year um, that talks about uh, enterprises and their attitudes toward our open source. And just last year, we actually saw that a lot of these uh, enterprises, I think it was 900 enterprises that submitted to that survey, a lot of them were actually saying, look, we're looking at open source as a higher quality option than a lot of their proprietary counterparts. It's because innovation happens at a much uh, a faster rate. But when you actually get to the enterprise and say, okay, well, let's take that innovation and implement it, they're looking for someone to actually help them get there, someone to actually help them participate in that discussion. And so that's where the innovation that I think Dell and Red Hat and encapsulating what's coming from the community, going to the enterprise and saying, look, this innovation has happened. Um, here's, let's, here's how we can implement in your environment is something the two companies are actually working on quite a bit. An interesting stat that came out of that, just as a side note, 57%, uh, if I get the statistic right, 57% of those respondents actually said they expect to collaborate with their competitors over the next three years to drive innovation in their technology spaces. Okay, that's a very telling, a very telling uh, stat that actually lines up very well with this, everybody in this community and how we're trying to drive innovation forward. And at the end of the day, it's gotta be enterprise grade, all right? It is gotta be tested, validated, the specific use cases are defined and tuned and configured to make sure that it will work in those environments. Services teams that are behind it actually go on site and make sure they're configured for specific environments, integration into existing architectures, and then support and services behind it to make sure that it works. That's really where the enterprise is gonna latch onto this to have people like Dell and Red Hat behind it to actually make sure that it works. And this is a great thing for our community because really we want enterprise adoption. That's what we want as a community because then it actually reciprocates back to the community. You start getting more goodwill, you start seeing more, uh, more uh, enterprise attention, which means you get better traction in the market. The vendors that are participating meet their business objectives and it becomes a really, it's a circle of goodness that starts happening if we get enterprise adoption. And that's what Dell and Red Hat are trying to, uh, trying to drive here. You saw some pieces of this at, uh, at, the, at the keynote this morning that Tim Yaten from Red Hat actually talked a little bit about this. But there actually is a package solution for customers that are looking to make an enterprise leap uh, to OpenStack that Dell and Red Hat offer together. The Dell Red Hat Open, uh, Cloud Solution powered by RHEL OSP, uh, the OpenStack platform. It is actually a, a, a skewed up product at Dell that includes a reference architecture fully validated by hardware people that know hardware in and out with a, a rock solid distribution from Red Hat having validated it at the distribution level and can collaborate it in a number of the projects that are out there together. This is based on history. Let me be very clear on that. It's not just two companies coming up with an idea, let's get together and, put, uh, and mishmash a bunch of stuff together. We are having been one of the earliest players in OpenStack, it's great because we get to say we were first, yay, fantastic. The other side of that coin is you get to live through all this trial and error of what works and what doesn't work. You get to go into actual customers and see what customers, what works for them and what doesn't work for them. So what we have in place right now is representative of us being in these IT organizations and understanding what works and what's going to give our customers their best chance for success. And so being able to get onto OpenStack fairly quickly, be able to get it in a, uh, and used in a productive manner fairly, fairly efficiently, and then having two vendors behind them for support um, is really what this solution is all about. And as, as Bill mentioned, we just announced it a couple of weeks ago. If, if you or customers that you influence are looking for this kind of help when it comes to OpenStack, which is what we as a community want, then uh, this is available today uh, in partnership with uh, Dell and with Red Hat. So let's cl click a, a one more click down into this. Um, to make this even easier for our customers, we decided to actually compartmentalize, uh, compartmentalize this into some easy configurations that our customers can consume. Uh, there are some customers that right from the beginning, they just have never done this before. In some cases, they've never even done distributed architecture or scale out architecture ever. Then that's when we really have a very basic POC configuration that gives them the bare minimum to get started on, uh, on implementing OpenStack with all the services, software, and support behind it. 
Now for customers that have either done a POC or a little bit more sophisticated, we offer them a, a pilot configuration, which essentially is a next click up, and we'll go into detail on all, all three of these. Um, that basically gives them a, a stamp that they can easily scale beyond that actually. So if you got that pilot configuration, it makes it a little bit easier to scale out as you grow. One interesting thing that we're finding, and maybe it resonates with you, um, in, in, in the past when we have sold products where there has been a proof of concept, I should be clear about what POC means, the proof of concept. Um, somebody actually at, at uh, just last week actually didn't know what POC meant, right? Point of contact could be a lot of the different things. Proof of concept in this case. Um, a lot of our customers start with a POC or start with a pilot. And in traditional, uh, you know, in our traditional lines of business, customers will pilot something or they'll do a proof of concept on something, verify it out, and then they will make a separate purchase that says, now that we've proven this out, we'll make a separate purchase and we'll buy it at scale. What we found in a lot of cases with OpenStack is for customers that look, are looking to get into OpenStack, they will actually start with a POC or a pilot and rather than tear that down, or rather than just try and redo it somewhere else, they'll actually build upon that. So there actually is a, a migration path that actually can happen. If you start really small, build your way up, you can actually get to a very compatible production level environment. And that pilot, that pilot uh, uh, configuration is meant for customers that have already gone past just basic evaluation of OpenStack. It's an easy way to get started at, at a broader scale. And then we've got the production scale a level, which essentially is, uh, you know, at that point we realize we need to have a conversation with you. Let's go on site, let's have a, con a, con a consultative conversation, understand what your networking fabric looks like, understanding what type of uh, systems you want to integrate with, let's build out a plan. It will use components of these other, of the other two configurations, but essentially it is going to try and build OpenStack into a production type environment. So let's deep dive into this a little bit. This is what the POC, the proof of concept <laughs> configuration looks like. Um, and it really is intended to be the first on-ramp for a customer that's just getting started. Now remember, we're trying to reach a, a customer set that um, either has not yet invested uh, in developers in this space or have decided that they want to spend their OpEx in a different way. This really is a quick on-ramp to get to OpenStack very, very quickly. Um, and if you want to, we'll break through the components particularly. This is a five node configuration. What we've, we believe is kind of the, the bare minimum to get the full experience of an OpenStack environment. It uses um, our Dell networking uh, S55 technology. It is a one gig networking uh, switch. Uh, for the POC, we feel that that is adequate. And again, it's based on what we've seen so far. Um, and it comes with our, the RHEL the Red Hat OpenStack distribution, as well as support from both Dell and Red Hat in terms of the entire system. Now, the way, if you look at how we broke it down, we actually have the, the Red Hat OpenStack manager as one of those nodes in particular, um, Nova and the OpenStack controller um, in particular. And then, because a lot of our customers come from the public cloud space, we have started talking about it in terms of how many virtual machines we can actually see its supports in this environment. Um, strangely enough, although we don't see massive adoption of public cloud right now um, with our customers, we do see a lot, um, and a lot of it happens without them knowing it, frankly. Uh, but now when you start looking at pricing models of how our public cloud friends um, are selling their public cloud, it's in terms of VM. So in this particular case, you can get up to 90 uh, virtual machines. One thing I'll call out on this before I move on to the pilot configuration, you don't see anything about, about storage in particular here. And that's because we're actually relying on just the local drive uh, on these compute nodes to, to satisfy this. Remember, it's a proof of concept only. And based on what we've seen over the last few years, this is usually adequate to get a customer up and going fairly quickly. We've seen over and over again, a lot of customers will take this type of configuration and just in a matter of time, very, very quickly, up and running, it will start working with OpenStack. Next, uh, the next configuration is that pilot configuration. Rather than go through all the details of, of what I've just said with the POC configuration, I'll highlight some of the differences here. Um, one of the differences is that we actually introduced the XD configuration of our R720. Our R720 uh, PowerEdge server is, um, is a very high volume type server. It's one that a lot of our customers will use for a lot of different workloads. In this particular case, it has an extra disk configuration. So you actually are able to maximize the amount of disk that are in a particular node. And uh, for storage type use cases, it works extremely, extremely well. Um, so we include that as part of our reference architecture. 
One other difference here is also that we are including a 10 gig, uh, 10 gig capability in the pilot configuration. Again, now that customers are a little bit more comfortable with, uh, with OpenStack at this level, um, we, and, they're, and they're requiring a 10 gig instance, uh, we've included the S4810 switch to be able to enable that as well as the S55 switch. Um, the other, the, the final thing, other than more nodes, right? You've got actually um, 11 nodes that are here in this, uh, in this configuration, so twice as big as the POC configuration. We do add a, uh, a few nodes specifically for Cinder um, so that we can actually highlight that capability. It's actually um, the Red Hat storage server that's included as part of this solution here. Um, so in addition to the networking cap uh, changes we made, additional capacity on the actual nodes itself, uh, we do include uh, the sender capabilities um, so that we can have storage as a service as its own dedicated presence here. Similar to how we've uh, couched the POC configuration, this particular configuration can go up to uh, almost 230 virtual machines in this environment. Yes? Uh, on the Nova nodes, is Comesh in this room? He was, okay. What's, what's the RAM level on the, on the, on the Nova nodes? Okay, so the question was what's the, the RAM on the, on the Nova nodes in 128 gigs? It varies, but up to 128 gigs. Okay, good question. And, and like I said, it was up to 230 virtual machines. Um, and that, and uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, I will highlight that this is really, there's not really much difference. We do add our PowerEdge C servers in this configuration. Uh, PowerEdge C um, comes out of a group at Dell called DCS. How many people here that don't work at Dell uh, know uh, what DCS is? Anybody heard of DCS? Okay, good. Um, DCS stands for uh, Data Center Solutions, and it's a team that was developed at Dell about five years ago uh, when a lot of these large-scale companies, and you can imagine the biggest clouds in the world, uh, biggest uh, social media sites, they would come to Dell with a, lot, with a lot of their configuration and specs already designed. And so it basically would say, um, <clears throat> we need, basically need a supply chain inviter, uh, I'm sorry, advisor. We need someone that can actually help us that has exper experience in building these scale-out solutions uh, and infrastructure. <clears throat> so we have a business unit that focuses specifically on enabling that type of customer as you can imagine, several thousands of servers at a time, right? Uh, what, was the, what's, what was the number that we heard about Google just the other day? It's not a Dell-specific number, but several billions of dollars of spent on infrastructure every quarter. Um, so that, that's the type of customer that comes to us and says, help us build this specific node. Um, and so that's where DCS came from. Um, DCS, it's relevant here because the, of the PowerEdge C server. What we found out was there was a hyperscale type customer, a density optimized type customer that didn't have the means or that, uh, that the largest clouds in the world could have to build its own uh, specific servers or specific infrastructure. So we started taking some of the basic tenets and what we found out was 80 to 90% of what we were building for these custom providers were about the same. Highly dense, extremely power uh, efficient, uh, and all of the redundancy was built at the software layer heavy open source, automation built in. So the PowerEdge C line, okay, which is different than PowerEdge R series, actually built in a lot of those tenants to go after that particular type of customer and say, we have something that's not just off the rack, rack-based x86 servers. It's actually a little bit more tuned um, for that cloud environment. And so with this configuration, we start bringing that in. Um, and as you see, you'll see on the roadmap I'll show in just a few minutes, uh, the PowerEdge C servers will start working its way in uh, to some of our mainstream offerings as well. Essentially, the long and short of this is, this is one of these cases where you can call Dell and Red Hat up, we will pick up the phone and we'll have a conversation about your environment and build something specifically for environment, a very services heavy engagement. Okay. Speaking of services, this actually is a critical part of how we're finding that the enterprise wants to talk to us about OpenStack. Um, you know, two or three years ago when we go to talk to customers, this is the same conversation they wanted. So if something goes wrong, what do I do? Who do I call? Um, if, uh, if I'm having a problem, if I'm even trying to just debug a component of it, what do I do? Who do I call? And that's what's important here. Uh, partnering with Red Hat on this, we're offering a, an entire portfolio of services that starts with uh, as simple as consulting, uh, like we talked about here, to describe what happens in a customer's environment, 
figure out what solution makes sense for them in their, in their specific engagement, um, to deployment. Um, you know, obviously we've been in the deployment business for a long time. There's a lot of deployment projects that are out there right now. Um, this is a key part of it, and it's not just about deployment. Let me be very clear. Deployment is not just about deployment. It's about upgrade. It's about configuration. There's a lot to the deployment mechanism. And so we have a services that will actually enable, uh, enable us to actually deliver uh, deployment services as well. And then at the end of the day, when these have actually been deployed on site, our enterprise customers in particular have said, we need a number. We need an 800 number. We need someone to call when these things uh, have issues, when I have questions, uh, when I want to upgrade, when I want to, you know, when I want to add new applications. There's a, and what Dell and Red Hat does is actually provide them this sort of level of, of, of support across this, the spectrum of uh, support uh, uh, abilities from 24 by 7, et cetera, updates, bug fixes, you know, things like that. Um, and then the, finally, this is kind of an interesting thing around training. Um, if you look at a lot of traditional environments in the enterprise today, they're very comfortable with uh, the notion of have, have our administrators get trained on something have them get certified on something, and then have a support number behind them. Uh, again, remember, this is how the enterprise has thought, and this is how they've lived their life historically. And so we've started to try and bridge that gap as well. A lot of hopefully what you're hearing today is us understanding that the cloud paradigm and the way IT runs today, there, there is some gaps. And so this is us trying to bridge that gap, and training is a good example of that. It's us and, and Red Hat working together to figure out how we train these customers on the Red Hat distribution, on understanding what is happening in the entire system when you're running an OpenStack system, and actually helping them to understand some of the basic tenets behind DevOps. DevOps is a key, uh, a key tenet to how cloud is run today, and we believe it's a key tenet of how cloud will run in the new enterprise IT. And so training them on those tenets is actually a key part of our, our solution delivery. Okay. And we'll kind of we'll, we'll kind of wrap up here. I will go through a roadmap in just a second, but but here's why we actually view this as really important, and why this is a way to approach it. Open is has always been a key tenet of how Dell has done things, from our architecture of our servers, uh, all the way to how we're trying to participate in the open source communities. Open has to be a part of how we deliver this to our customers. Locking it down, making it proprietary, is not the way that Dell has approached it, not the way that Red Hat has approached it. So keeping it as open as possible is important to our offering. Being able to be agile, right? In this environment where you've got this level of innovation, this level of milestone releases, this much innovation that happens at, at these summits that are happening at meetups, that are happening in PTL and, and uh, project meetings, we want to be able to keep up. Our customers want to keep up. They want to be agile. They want to, when there are new features that come in, they want to take advantage of it. And this approach allows us to, uh, an ability to do that. Now, the other side of that is that with all the great stuff, when you want to keep up with all the, all the newness that's coming out, the enterprise requirement is also, how do I make sure that this doesn't break anything? How do I make sure that this is compatible with everything that's happening in my environment? And this solution allows them to have kind of a good balance between what's new, what's emerging, what's right off the, you know, um, you know what's right out of, the, out of the community as far as a project update, but also be able to manage it in their environment is what this does. And really, this is now beginning to look like how OpenStack is getting into the enterprise. Again, I've, we've, we've watched this for the last few years now as a community, and we've always been going after the enterprise, and we're seeing the enterprise adopt it now. We're starting to see more and more of it. And this is allowing the enterprise to look at how it does IT. It's letting them look at how they run their application. It help, it's letting them look at how new applications are being developed and helps them understand how cloud organized uh, environments run. And this is really allowing them to be innovative and allow them to change and grow and evolve as this new paradigm changes. So really, this is really uh, something that we're really excited about with Red Hat because we think this is actually going to really hit the sweet spot of where our, our enterprise customers want to go, but give them the tools that they need to get there. So this is what, uh, you know, just for this year, uh, just through October, um, some of the things that, uh, and we're being a little cagey over here on V3 here, uh, but you could probably guess what's happening in that part of the, that part of the year. Um, but our next release, we just announced our, our version one, which came out um, in, in two weeks ago at the Red Hat Summit. Um, it seems like it's further back than that, but uh, 
We actually have a solution available now. It is Havana-based. Um, this next release will actually come out is going to be Ice House-based. Uh, and we're in the process of working with Red Hat on uh, hardening uh, that community release and taking all the community goodness that's coming into it. Um, the good news about uh, Ceph uh, was that we were fans of Ceph well before uh, Red Hat was in the picture. Um, and we've been enabling customers with Ceph um, as a storage option for their OpenStack clouds for quite a, quite a while. In fact, let me make a plug for that, um, that tomorrow, um, JP, raise your hand, JP. Uh, JP, who put me on the spot just a few minutes ago asking about RAM, uh, is uh, one of our customers with the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And uh, him, uh, he and Kamesh, uh, the product manager on my team, uh, will be doing an entire session tomorrow about how UAB implemented OpenStack with Ceph. Um, and we'll go through details. And so you won't hear the vendor talking about it. You'll hear the, an actual customer implementation of it. So highly recommend you attend. Um, but as we roll out the next version of our OpenStack solution with Red Hat, um, we'll start seeing integration with, uh, with the Ceph acquisition that came with that. And then there you'll see just a, a, a kind of strong storage theme um, throughout uh, this next release. Um, tuning configurations for storage as a service use cases, incorporating our, our own products like Ecologic. Um, there are Ecologic drivers that are all av already available in the community. Us in the process of hardening it for an enterprise consumption. And a lot of our customers, a lot of, I, know, I can already imagine having been in this space, the questions that come up around Ecologic, right? We, a lot of folks are looking at nodes and storage, uh, local storage. The reality is a lot of the enterprise customers still believe in, in storage, in SAN arrays, and have those. And there are use cases that make sense for those, for those enterprise customers. So it's been our customers that have been driving us to have us an answer around Ecologic in these, in these, uh, in these cloud spaces. Um, and then uh, high availability is one thing that we were hoping to get in this first release. We will have in this next release as a configuration at that pilot level. So you'll see a pilot HA configuration likely come out in this time frame. And I would tell you more about our version three, but apparently it's a secret. Um, but I can, as, you, as you can imagine, that's the time frame that uh, Juno will be coming out and uh, we'll be picking up some of the milestone releases right around then. Okay. Um, this is my next to last slide, and the last slide will just be some contact information on, on how you can get more information. Uh, but let me, let me be clear on, on some things here. Um, OpenStack has always been at the, at, at the core, since day one, of how we think this, uh, this, or, uh, this market is going to evolve. It has not been just about cloud. It has not just been about a new technology. We actually believe that OpenStack represents a, a platform. It represents a layer that infrastructure of all kinds can plug into and applications of all, time, all kinds can plug into and be, able to, uh, and be able to operate within that entire infrastructure. That's what OpenStack represents. And that's why it's important to us that we keep it open. That's why it's important to us that we enable and enrich this community. And that's why we believe it's important that we ask while we participate in the community, that we be the flag bearers to the enterprise to make sure that that type of adoption um, is available. Okay. All right, last slide, and then we'll, we'll open up if you have any questions. Uh, and we got people in the room throughout that can help answer some of these questions here. Um, for customers that are looking for their next step in OpenStack, especially the customers that may not, uh, you know, customers that you may know of that may not be here, or maybe your own environment, uh, that may not be here. I will just say that um, even Dell IT as an organization, th they fall into this camp in some degree. They are, if they have OpEx, they want to spend it on moving their infrastructure and their environment forward um, in, in terms of, in other ways rather than, in, and the, rather than investing in developers. They were our number one use case for this. We have, actually have a published use case, a reference from, our, from Dell IT about how they are using the Dell Red Hat solution to incorporate OpenStack into our own IT organization. So this is a really clear example of the kind of things that would be helpful for you, for your customers, for others that are in that space that, that really need to benefit. And let me say, as a community member, we need the enterprise to adopt this. We really do. We need the enterprise to pick up this and use it in a big way, come back to us and work with us and partner with us on building it out. So for those customers that, and those companies and those people that you know of, they may fit that mold, here's some of the things that they can do. Um, Dell.com slash OpenStack has got everything that we are doing around OpenStack. And similarly, red, RedHat.com slash Dell Cloud. All the information that you've seen here today, the configurations, the, the reference case studies, all those things out there fully available, 
highly recommend that you or they start there. Um, secondly, there's a thing called the Dell Solution Center. Um, <clears throat> we like Ds and Ss and Cs, they're in every ac acronym. Um, the Dell Solution Center is actually a pretty interesting thing. It's kind of like, um, you know, when we had the community environment where anybody could log into OpenStack and uh, try out their workloads, Dell actually has solution centers throughout the country and throughout the world. Um, Shanghai, uh, obviously in Round Rock, um, you know, in Europe, uh, Chicago, where you can actually go and bring your OpenStack workloads to a Dell environment and run a POC, multi-week POC if you choose, uh, and on Dell infrastructure running OpenStack. You can do that today. Um, so if your customers or you are interested in doing that, I highly recommend just talking to your Dell salesperson, Dell rep, they can get you connected to that. You can come down to Round Rock to do it. You can do it in your, in, in your locale. You can actually have experts flown in to actually walk you through this. And the Dell Solution Center have folks that administer this on a daily basis so they know the ins and outs of it. They will actually caution you on certain configurations. They'll actually advise you on what configurations would work optimally. It's a very strong resource. And you can find out more at uh, dell.com slash solution centers. Fully enabled with, uh, with OpenStack today. Um, and, then, and the easiest thing, if you don't remember anything else about how to get in touch with us, OpenStack at Dell.com is the easiest way to run. So if you don't remember anything else about how to get in touch, OpenStack at Dell.com actually comes to me, my team, our engineering team, our Red Hat folks are involved now as well. Um, that, is a, that is the way to get in touch and learn about any of these things, learn about what we'll be doing going forward. Any other questions that you might have can go through Dell.com. And we'll leave this slide up here for any questions that we've got. So now let me invite Bill to come on back up. And if there are any questions uh, that you might have, like about RAM or anything else, <laughs> uh, feel, free to, feel free to ask uh, there. Um, I guess one of the things I will, will put out there is um, uh, we were at the Red Hat Summit just a few weeks ago and talked about this distribution um, and uh, the, the configurations that just came out. Uh, I know we've got a couple of customers that are already in eng uh, engagements with us. Um, I'll just ask Bill, maybe in, in particular, are there, are there some things that come out with conversations you all are having with customers around, uh, around what, what we're doing together? Yeah, you know. um, I mean, they view it as industry leading, right? I mean, as I mentioned, Dell was the first to, you know, almost uh, fore foresaw where Linux was going to go 15 years ago when it was the first to preload uh, Linux on workstations and servers. And they see us collaborating together just as we did back then, mm -hmm. kind of anticipating the future. So right. that's, you know. It's industry-leading innovation is what we hear from our now, customers. Now, one other thing that I will say, and this is the one thing that, keep, that came up a lot and with our customers after we made the announcement is, what exactly is Red Hat doing with the open source bits, right? Why would I try to get something that is, uh, that's deviated from the open source trunk? And that's, that's a, I don't know where that perception came from, but that's absolutely incorrect, right? No, and we're doing yeah. the same thing with OpenStack that we do for Linux. We extend the life cycle, we do backporting and bug fixes, we provide, uh, collaborative technical support, um, and with the Ice House release, uh, I don't know if we've announced it, but I think we're going to have a three-year life cycle, which is kind of what we did for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 3. We're now at Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 coming out this summer. So with each subsequent OpenStack community release, we'll be extending the life cycle so customers can standardize. And then we backport new features and provide security errata and, and bug fixes. It's exactly the same model uh, OpenStack follows as the same model that we do for Linux. Yeah, and in fact, the specific, one, the one question I, I asked, answered in specific was around um, the work, any incremental work that Red Hat does on the OpenStack bits are all upstreamed. Great. They all go right back to the community to make sure that that's enabled in the community bits. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, I think the next session start. Is it start? When does it start? I've got plenty of time. Okay, <laughs> okay it does look like we're starting. Um, if there are any questions, uh, Bill and I will be up at the front. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.